John Joseph Matthews, November 16, 1894 to June 16, 1979, became one of the Osage Nation's most important spokespeople and writers and served on the Osage Tribal Council during the 1930s. He studied at the University of Oklahoma, Oxford University and the University of Geneva after serving as a flight instructor during World War I. Matthew's first book was A History, Warakon Ta, The Osage and the White Man's Road 1929, which was selected by the Book of the Month Club as their first by an academic press, it became a bestseller. His book The Osages, Children of the Middle Waters 1961 was a life work, preserving many collected stories and the oral history of the Osage. He also wrote a biography of E. W. Marland, noted oil man and governor of Oklahoma in the 1930s. <laughs> Early life and education Matthews was born at Pawhuska, Oklahoma as the only son among five children of William Shirley and Eugenia Gerard Matthews. His banker father was the son of John Allen Matthews, a noted trader, and Sarah Williams, the mixed-race daughter of A.C. and Gar, a full-blood Osage, and Old Bill. Williams, a noted missionary and later mountain man who lived with the Osage. Matthew's grandparents had met in Kentucky where Old Bill Williams had sent his daughters for school after A.C. and Gar had died. John Joseph Matthew's mother was Pauline Eugenia Gerard, whose family had emigrated from France. One eighth Osage by ancestry, as well as Anglo Scots Irish and French, the Matthews children all attended local schools in Pawhuska. Service in World War I came before college, and John Matthews became a flight instructor and second lieutenant after time in the cavalry. Afterward, he went on to the University of Oklahoma, then studied at his own expense at Oxford University in England, graduating in 1923. He studied international relations at the University of Geneva and the Graduate Institute of International Studies and traveled in Africa before returning to the United States, determined to study the culture and traditions of the Osage. Topic: Marriage and family. John had three sisters and one brother. Two of his sisters, Lillian and Marie Matthews, remained unmarried and lived in the family home at 911 Grandview Avenue in Pawhuska, Oklahoma, until their deaths. His brother was killed as a child by a mountain lion steps from the family home. He has five surviving great nieces and nephews: Fleur Fagan, William Fagan, Major, U.S. Army, retired; Howard J. Schellenberg, three; Jean Hulse, and Maria Schellenberg. In 1924, in Geneva, Matthews married Virginia Winslow Hopper. They first settled in California, where they had two children, John and Virginia. The couple divorced, Matthews returned to Oklahoma, where he stayed the rest of his life. Years later in 1945 he married Elizabeth Hunt. She worked with him on much of his research related to the Osage and their forced migration from Missouri to Oklahoma. He considered her son John Hunt a stepson. Career After his return to Oklahoma, Matthews began writing in the late 1920s and published his first book, a work of literary nonfiction, Warakon Ta, The Osage and the White Man's Road with the University of Oklahoma Press. 
The first work by an academic press to be selected by the New Book of the Month Club, the book became a bestseller through that secondary publication. His most famous work is Sundown, 1934, his only novel. The semi autobiographical work is about Challenge, Chal Windsor, a young Osage. After leaving home to study at the University of Oklahoma and serve in the military, Chal feels estranged when he returns to his tribal community. He suffers from alienation and hopelessness as his life takes a downward swerve. The novel is set during the turbulence of the oil boom that took place on Osage land in Oklahoma beginning in the first two decades of the 20th century, bringing great wealth to the people who had headrights. It depicts the frictions within the tribal community resulting from the Bonanza, as well as the swindles and numerous murders of Osage during the 1920s as white opportunists tried to get control of the Osage headrights. During the 1930s and the Great Depression, Matthews was politically active within the Osage Nation. As the people took advantage of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 and the Oklahoma Indian Welfare Act, Matthews helped the Osage Nation restore its self-government. He was elected to the Tribal Council, serving from 1934 to 1942. He helped found the Osage Tribal Museum, which opened in 1938 in Pawhuska. In 1940, Matthews served as the United States Representative to the Indians of the Americas Conference at Michoacán, Mexico. From 1939 to 1940 he lived and studied in Mexico on a Guggenheim Fellowship. Later, he concentrated again on his writing. His work Talking to the Moon 1945 is a narrative of the ten years he spent in the Black Jacks of his homeland, observing nature and reflecting on the influence of the environment on Osage culture. It is a combination of autobiography, philosophical treatise and the work of an amateur naturalist. Some critics compared it to Henry David Thoreau's Walden among that author's works. In The Osages, Children of the Middle Waters 1961, Matthews combined his research with many oral histories collected from his people, as a way of preserving and interpreting their common culture. His Life and Death of an Oilman, The Career of E. W. Marland was his only biography, it recounts the life of a multi-millionaire oilman and politician, who also served as governor of the state in the 1930s. Works <laughs> <laughs> Warakon Tar, The Osage and the White Man's Road, 1929. Sundown, 1934. Talking to the Moon, 1945. Life and Death of an Oilman, The Career of E. W. Marland, 1951. The Osages, Children of the Middle Waters, 1961. 20,000 Mornings 2011. Topic. Legacy and honors 1996, Oklahoma Historians Hall of Fame, posthumous induction <laughs> Notes <laughs>